often read people crying about changing the meaning of marriage. Or the truly silly one that gay marriage will change a 6,000 year tradition. Marriage in the U.S. is not entirely a tradition, much less traditional, and never really has been. The true purpose of marriage is not even religious, but one of legalizing rights to, of people who love each other. There's the key to this whole mess that is almost always forgotten. The current tradition of marriage, one that's barely more than 40 years old, is that people marry who they love. Until the 19th century in Europe, almost all marriages were arranged or forced. This often led to having relationships outside of marriage, such as mistresses or other unfaithful acts. The entire purpose of marriage then was to secure family resources, and the marriage itself was treated more like a treaty between families. Nice tradition, and that's barely 200 years ago. That's so much for the 6,000 year notion, eh? After that, even after the U.S. altered the tradition to be one more about choice and love, there was still a class of people unable to be married, or at least the law did not recognize their marriages, the slaves, which in the U.S. were black people, technically Africans, since most were stolen from their country and did not come here willingly. Since they could not own property or have rights of their own, there was no legal precedent for marriage at all. They modified some of their tribal customs in an attempt to hold on to their own humanity. Of course, that ended when slavery was abolished, with only one major catch. No one could marry outside of the artificial construct of race. I say artificial construct because we know that the social percep perceptions of what race is are all wrong, and that there is no real boundary. But that's a different video altogether. Back on topic. Until 1967, yeah, less than 50 years ago, barely longer than I have been alive, no one was allowed to marry outside the artificial boundaries of race. So in less than 200 years, the supposed tradition has changed drastically four times. So much for the how old this tradition is. The current form of marriage is barely older than I am. Now that the lame 6,000 year old claim is put to rest, the final point that should be made is this. Marriage is not a religious institution anymore. You see, we are all familiar with the separation of church and state in the U.S., and this concept is spreading through Europe as well. The government does not meddle in religious institutions within reason, and the religious institutions cannot be in favor by the government. A really simple concept to understand, but it seems zealots and bigots just cannot figure this out. For there are two aspects to marriage, one legal that is controlled and enforceable by the law, and the religious one which is just whatever traditions the belief calls for. The religious marriage is supposed to be separated from the legal marriage. That is how our government works. Therefore, the church can choose what ceremonies they want to allow or not. That is how it's been as long as I remember. Many people being married legally, but with no religious institution. It's extremely common. This means that the legal definition of marriage will always be at odds with some religious belief. However, it can be widened to include everyone's religious beliefs instead of denying some and not others. But the zealots are attempting to force the government to favor their specific religious beliefs by creating amendments to the constitutions in the U.S. preventing the laws from being all-encompassing. In short, they are trying to ban specific people from marrying who they love. Since the legal form of marriage is a legal contract, that means only consenting adults can ever enter into it. So don't even bother trying the slippery slope fallacy on this. It makes you look like a disgusting pervert when you do, since no one else is thinking whatever it is you're thinking until you mention it. Back to the contract. The marriage contract itself is not a right. I give you that one. But the contract is a collection of rights. So yes, denying people marriage is denying them equal rights. The collection of rights are things such as inheritance, medical, and even burial that are enjoyed by those who are married. These are just a few of the rights. I don't know them all. But these rights allow the person that one loves and trusts more than anyone else to make important decisions when no one else should be making them for them. So when you deny gay marriage, you are denying equal rights. Gay people are not offered the same marriage right. You see, marriage partners are chosen. Straight people. Heterosexual couples. Get married, get to marry who they love. A gay person cannot love someone of the opposite gender. Thus, they are being denied the entire principle of modern marriage. This is the exact same reason interracial marriage was allowed as well. It is 
allowing two consenting adults who love each other the legal contract that allows them to choose who is allowed to speak for them in any case they are not able to. Now someone is likely thinking that they should just be happy with civil unions. You are just battling over labels now. Not to mention that this has been tried and the bigots and zealots still deny them civil unions. Technically, that's what all legal marriage contracts are anyway. And you know it. That's why the bigots have fought to even prevent those from being allowed. However, it's pretty sad that you are so invested in keeping a single word to mean a specific thing. The number of times I have heard zealots and bigots change the meanings of words to suit their own stupid arguments, combined with this, makes them hypocrites as well. To sum this all up, if you don't like change, you're in the wrong universe. It is not our similarities that make life so strong. It is our differences, our unique lives, our colorful personalities, and the variation in everything. So tolerate the differences, embrace the change, and let us move to the next level of civilization.